Good afternoon. Exciting to be back at back at practice on the field. It's uh, as I said yesterday. It's one of the best times of the year, I think, for us as coaches and players, and really as a program, to really go out there and, and work at our craft. But we've got a lot of work to do. You know, I didn't think the practice was particularly clean. Uh, I didn't think we were particularly accurate throwing the football uh, at any of the, the spots at quarterback. Uh, I think we've got a, a lot of quarterbacks playing right now, and I think that's hard to do, and it looked hard today. So, you know, as I said, we're going to take a couple practices, and then we're going to start to to maneuver the reps in, in a way where we can hopefully progress the offense. Questions? So what happened today, was, it doesn't change your going forward. You're thinking that by the, the end of the third practice on Saturday, that's when you'll start to... I think so. I, I, I think so. I, I don't want to. I don't want to overreact today to today, but I don't want to to live in denial of it either. It wasn't. It wasn't good enough. And if we're going to start really making progress as an offense, we're going to have to start limiting the reps that everybody takes. I don't think you can have a, a football team where you rep five quarterbacks, and we're going to do that for the first two to three practices, and then you know as we get into next week, we're going to have to have a little different plan. Carl, you say um, want it cleaner. What kind of things in particular? You no, I think that I don't think the timing is great between the quarterbacks and receivers, which is probably the the normal, you know, for this point in, in spring. I think when you have that many that many quarterbacks under center, the cadence is going to be different. Not everybody's cadence is exactly the same, even though we're using the same counts. Um, so that's hard on the linemen and the tight ends, and people aren't getting off the ball at the same time. There's not a rhythm to the cadence that, that you'd like to have. So I think it's those types of things. Did anybody pop out? Yeah, I mean, just to the naked eye. Uh, it's always, it, that's always, a, I, I know I'm going to get that question, and, I, and I, I realize that. So as I watch practice, I try to see if there are some people who flash. And uh, Until you look at the film, you don't want to overreact to anything you see, you know, from a positive or a negative standpoint. I, I think a guy, but there's a couple guys who made some plays today. A guy like Miles Nash made, made a few plays today. He picked one ball off, and, and he tipped a ball that ended up getting intercepted. And I, and I think that was really good. You know, I saw you know Cam Lott out there for the first time. He made a nice play. And but the, the pads aren't on yet. And until the pads go on practice three, I don't I don't know that you really can be overly impressed with any of that stuff. You know, like I said, as a, as a team, I think we've got a lot of a lot to work on. But the, the one thing that I I always look for day one is just the the enthusiasm and the excitement of the players to to not only practice hard but but to be coached. And it seemed like we had a group of players out there that really were looking to be coached today, and that was probably the, the most positive thing I saw on the field. Scott, Leontay was having this kind of breakout year last year and then missed those last three games with the upper body injury. Can, can he pick up where he left off? No lingering effects from that injury, and do you need him to to be, kind of fill that number one receiver role? I think by the time we get this season, Leontay will be 100% healthy, and, and there's no reason to think that his uh, – that the production that he had this year, he won't have the opportunity to have it next year. Now, as as I've said before, at receiver, you can't guarantee a guy a certain number of catches a game. It's not like running back where you can hand him the ball and you can make a decision before the game that we're going to hand somebody the ball 25 times and then do it. At receiver, it's a little bit different. You know, the, the, there are things defenses can do to to make the quarterback look in other directions. But uh, but I think Leontay will continue to work on his craft, and, and next year he'll be a, a better player than he was last year. Will he be a full participant? Um, as of right now, he is, but I'd, uh, I'll reserve the right to to modify that as we go. Right. Kyle, did you get a chance to see Ian or uh, TJ at all? Um, I saw both guys. Yeah, I, I saw both guys, and I think I think what I see are guys that are working. Yeah, you know, I think both guys are working, and and I think we'll need we're going to need the full spring. I think to really evaluate both those guys, and, and not just them, a lot of others. How was the? Uh, how did you feel like the coaching chemistry was? This is the first time this group was actually together, coaching players. Did you like what you saw? I, I did. I thought I thought the practice ran smooth. I, I thought you know watching Ben and, and Mike work with the receivers, I thought they had a good plan to make sure that they utilized the manpower and, and the individual attention that they were able to give, and 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 seeing Ralph with the quarterbacks and then working with the running backs, the tight ends, the receivers, and maneuvering through that. I, I thought all that flowed flowed very well, and and I think the coaches as a as a whole, were very professional about how they went about their business. So I think uh, it's not the first time I think any of them are, are with the new staff. So it, it went smoother. Kyle, Sebastian Joseph, how does he look physically, and what do you like about moving him to the nose tackle? Physically, uh, he, he looks he looks very good. I, I would have said that before spring break, you know, really watching him in the winter program. So that, that part we're, we're excited about. We, we, we played him a little bit at nose guard during bowl prep. 
Uh, so we got him some work there. We got a chance to look at him. Um, you know, I know today from, from being close to where Coach Panagos was in practice, although you don't necessarily need to be that close to him to hear him, um, I know he wasn't always aligned exactly where he was supposed to be. And I, I think those are things that will get cleaned up, and he's a, a young guy. And, and you know, we have high expectations for Sebastian. He, he's talented, and, and he's had a good offseason, and we're, we're counting on him to help us this year. What do you expect out of Ruhan now that he's back full time and obviously there's a chance to step up into a bigger role? Receiver? Full time as of today. Well, okay. <laughs> I reserve the right to, to alter that also. But um, the only thing I the only thing I need Ruhan to do is is to to come every day and be the competitive person that he is because he's got the talent to make the plays on offense. But what he adds to our football team from a competitive standpoint is is at such a high level. I think it's. A, He's a fun guy to coach and a fun guy to be around. Thank you.